right, looks like we're live. Okay, give everyone a minute to uh, join us. We're gonna need a bundle of yarn, some scissors, or kitchen shears, um, a large needle or paper clip. When I say large needle, I mean enough to fit the yarn through. And that's it, that's all we need. So yeah, find yourself a bundle of yarn. I actually have two bundles here. Um, I might go back and forth. And my trusty kitchen shears. And this paper clip I undid. So now I've got this, um, what looks kind of like a, a regular hairpin. So if you have a hairpin instead, that works too. Hello, Carrie Mather. It's wonderful to, for you to join us. Let's see if um, more people other than my mother shows up, which I think is great, you know? Support from afar, artists supporting artists. All right, we'll give it about a minute. All right, if you're there, say hello. I'd love to see who's watching, who's interested. Make sure you've got your yarn. I've got two bundles here. You only need one, and you don't need this much. I just, this is what I have. And if you've been following, I have my trusty kitchen shears because I don't own scissors. And then I have my paper clip. So I took this paper clip and I bent it to be the shape of a hairpin. If you have a hairpin that you want to use instead, that works too. Um, just make sure that you've got it so that the two ends are close together because we're going to use this to weave into our project. All right. So let's get this started. Go ahead and undo your paper clip if you've got that, or if you've got a large needle, make sure that your yarn can go through your needle. That's why I said large. Um, if you don't have a large needle, go find yourself a paper clip or a hairpin. Not a bobby pin, a hairpin because you want to get the ends together. I already tried this with a bobby pin and it doesn't work. So hairpin or paper clip. Okay, so today we're making tassels and pom-poms. And I thought it would be great to put them into a nice little garland um, to, to stretch over whatever you want to spruce up. Now I started one here, but it's more of an example. So I've got these, or these are pom-poms. So as you can see, we'll do pom-poms first. As you can see, they're, they go from um, kind of like scraggly and thin to gradually thicker. Um, my yarn happens to be different colors because I reused it from a different project, but this is a great way to see how um, the more yarn you use or the more times you wrap around your finger, the thicker and the fuller it'll appear. So we don't necessarily want the scraggly one, we want closer to this guy over here. So let's start with that. Find yourself, find yourself your yarn. Now. I'm going to want to use my green yarn just because I've got more of it. Find the end. All right. Found the end of the yarn. Now we're going to find three fingers. One, two, three. And place your yarn right at the base of those three fingers. And we're going to wrap around. Now we want to count how many times you wrap, especially if you're going to do a garland, because we want them to be even. So. The larger one I did over here, I did 20 wraps, but I think that I could do more. So let's try 30 and see if that gives us a nice voluptuous pom-pom. All right, so we've gone just the one, and I go up and around, and I'm gonna call that one. I'm gonna count whenever I touch my index finger. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh oh, uh oh, what is that? What is that? Hit an obstacle. Haha. -ha. I forget what number I was on. Let's call that 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 29, 30. Now you don't have to do 30 if you don't have enough yarn, but 
I do. So I'm going to do 30. And then I'm going to snip it off. I want to snip it off um, so it's lining up with the rest of them. All right. Hmm, left hand. Didn't think that through. All right, holding on with my pinky there. There we go. So we've got our bundle. Okay, something else I didn't think through because when I was practicing this, I already had all my scraps. Uh, go ahead and cut a small piece off. So it's about, about that long. Doesn't have to be very long. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this to the side so I can show you. All right. Oh, I have a table now. It's very exciting. Okay, so we're gonna put our bundle, take our bundle off. We're gonna, sorry, we're gonna lay this down first. Take our bundle off, put it down right in the center, just like that. Take these two sides, bring them up, and tie them in a simple knot over, under, through. Hold together tight. And I'm just gonna do that again, over, under, through. Hold together tight. So now we've got this bundle. We can either, we can cut and then fan it out, or fan it out and then cut. I actually found that if you fan it out first, it comes out a little bit better. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna take this, what looks kind of like a bow, I'm gonna fan it out so that they all kind of meet up and it's more of a circular shape. Remember, we're making a pom-pom, so you want more of a circular shape. And then go ahead and take your scissors and find your way into the loops and just start cutting. We wanna make sure that we don't leave any loops um, still intact, which is why it might be easier in some cases to cut and then fan out. But I find that when you try to fan it out second, as a second step, then um, sometimes you pull too hard on one side than in the other. All right, I'm gonna keep cutting around. It's kind of hard to cut through a bunch of yarn at once, but you can do it. And the thicker your yarn is, if you have like really thick yarn that's used for um, super cozy scarves or something, then you'll get uh, a more voluptuous pom-pom just because there's more uh, yarn, more plies, like a three ply versus a four ply versus a one ply. You don't want to do this with a one or two ply. That would not leave you with a very exciting pom pom. My hands getting tired. Kitchen shears are not always the way to go. I'm learning that through trial and error. Okay, so it looks like I cut all the way through. Find the two longer bits that you have and hold on to those. Hold on to these and take the rest of them and kind of fluff it out. Fluff it out, fluff it out, fluff it out, fluff it out. And you should come up with a little pom-pom. Now these aren't gonna be the same kind of pom-poms that you see, um, you know, like if you go to buy them off the shelf. Uh, obviously they're homemade, so they do look a little different. They're not fully circular all the way around. Uh, you can make a loom to do that, but I thought that this was easier, um, especially to teach kind of through the internet. So we take our two long bits and we hold on to those, and then we can take a longer thread. If you want to cut yourself a longer um, bit that's going to be kind of like your garland, uh, then you can do that. And then you take those two longer bits. Find yourself a spot on your yarn, and we're just going to over, under, through that. Tie it all the way, tight, and we're going to do a second one, and tie it tight. And then we cut off the extra, so it's the same length as the rest of our pom-pom. Just like that. So we've got... As you can see, this one's even bigger. So the more times you wrap, I wanna say this was about like six times around, and then this one was 12, and then this colorful one right there is 20, and then this one is 30. So the more times that you wrap around your hand, the 
uh, more voluptuous it will become. Um, so let's do another one. I'm going to increase it just because I have the materials. I think that it would be fun. Oh, forgot one thing. If you've got yarn that is more than one ply and can be unwoven, you can take your pom-pom and my yarn does pretty well if I just rub it into my hand. If I do that, it kind of like scruffs up the edges and it gives it more of a tussled uh, tip. So you can do that or you can take a comb if it's thick enough. Mine isn't quite thick enough to go through a comb. Um, mine is, how many millimeters I forget? I forget. Um, but this is, this is the, the yarn that I use for macrame for my keychains because I think it's a really nice um, thickness or you can like untwist, you untwist it. So just the more you agitate it, the bigger it'll get. So just keep doing that, the bigger it'll get. All right, so let's do this one more time. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for even bigger. Maybe let's try 45. That sounds like a good idea. All right, so I'm gonna cut off the little piece that I'm gonna use to tie together my bungle. I'm gonna do that first before my hand is bound. All right, put that off to the side. Take my yarn, I'm also gonna unweave some of it so that I'm not dealing with that. Okay, so I found it. Oh, you can also do more fingers. So if you want longer hoops, say you've got thicker yarn, you can do over four fingers or you can do over two fingers. I like the three fingers for my size of what I'm doing, but you can always adjust how many fingers you use. Um, for a loom, you would do the same thing with a piece of cardboard. You would do just like a square with the inside cut out so it looks like a picture frame, and then you do the same thing, and then you go under and tie, but I don't want to add more materials, and we've got our fingers. So, three fingers, hold it down, and going around, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Seven, eight. So, of course, in true Ruby fashion, I forgot what I was doing, and I was going to count to 45, but instead I started counting in eights like any dancer would, you know? So if dancers count in eights, I just did four eights, so I did 32. So I'm going to keep going, so 45, so 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. I think that's hilarious that my default is counting in eights. Okay, so now, cut off. The, the extra, and we're trying to cut right in line. I find that if I just use my pinky, that works out. So right in line, put that down, put this off to the side, move this down so you can see. All right, so we take our bundle off of our fingers, put it down, we're gonna put it right in the middle, just like a little package, we're gonna tie up a little package over, under, through, and pull tight. One little trick that I do anytime that I tie a knot, um, I like to change up my uh, the side that goes over, under, through. Um, let me just get out a longer piece so I can demonstrate this. Um, so when I do my over, under, through, let me tie it onto my phone, just so you can see. Okay, so I'll do Say I'll do the right side over. If I do the right side over, I go over, under, through. And then I do the left side over. I like to change the direction that I go. So I do left side over. You see that? Left side over, over, under, through. So that when I pull tight, my extra string goes in the same direction as the tie. If I were to do it the other way, if I were to go, hold on, hold on, okay. If I were to go over, under, through the right side, and then I'm going to do over, under, through again with the right side, over, under, through, 
then I get this um, change of direction. So as you can see, there's a difference between cutting, sorry, between tying it the same, sorry, this is the same. I do over under through with the right side twice and then it creates this opposite direction. On this one, I did over under through the right side and then the left side so that they go in the same direction. I actually tie my shoes like this because I don't like the, the bunny ear ties being the wrong way. I like them to go exactly side to side. So if you do over under through and the other way over under through, it's a little challenging on your brain the first time you do it, but it helps with the direction so that you're not accidentally going um, perpendicular. You wanna go parallel. Okay, back to what I was doing. So we've got our bundle over under through, and now I'm gonna go the left side over under through. Okay, so it's nice and taut. Probably could've made that a little bit tighter. Oops, it's okay. Now, I've got my bundle, and I'm gonna fan it out, fan it out on both sides. So we're going for a more circular shape. And then we cut, just like we did before. So find your way in, pick a little bunch at a time so that we're not trying to do the whole thing at once, and cut. You might find that part of your scissor works better than the other to cut. Mine is closer to the, um, to the axis that it cuts better. Yours might be more toward the tip. All right, three quarters of the way. There we go. Still going. Almost there. Remember, we want to get all of them. All right, got all of them. Now, find your two longer bits. Make sure you got a hold of those and start fluffing out the rest. Fluff it out, fluff it out. Ah, see, this one looks much bigger. And I haven't even tussled it as much as I could. All right, so tussle it about and tussle it about. All right. If you don't tie it tight enough, some of them might fall out. So just be wary. Okay, so I've got my garland here. I'm gonna add it to the end. And we're gonna go. This time, it doesn't matter if I do my knot in the same direction or not. Haha, <laughs> same direction or not. Uh, Cause the yarn's gonna go in any which way anyway. So it really doesn't matter. All right, and then cut the excess so that it matches the rest, so it matches the rest. All right, so now we've got our pom-pom. And as you can see, well, first of all, if you don't hang this right away and you let, let it lay on a table or something, then it might mess up the shape. But this was 30 and this was 45, 45 times around the fingers. So it's already looking a little bit bigger. I wish I had thicker yarn, because I think that it would make it look better. But as you can see, fewer wraps as it gets bigger. So the more you do, the bigger it gets. Okay, now if we want to switch up our pom-poms and say put in a tassel, add some variety, we can do that. I already have right here so I can show you. This is a quote-unquote macrame tassel. It's different, they say, from regular tassels. So in this tassel, I don't know if you can see, YouTubers do that, I don't know. But it makes this knot formation. You can't see this, it's totally washed out. But it's kind of like a knot formation that we're gonna do. You'll see once we start it. So find your yarn, one more time. I'm gonna put my garland off to the side for a bit. Okay, and now we're going to 
start measuring and cutting. So let me remember, there are five, this one has five strands per section, and there are four sections, so it'll be like 10 cut in two, 20 cut in four. So we're gonna get 20 longer strands. I'm gonna do, let's see, let's say, no, we want longer than that. Let's do, if you had your ruler, I could tell you. I don't have my ruler with me, it's over there. Um, maybe like seven, eight inches. Here, I'll cut it here and I'll show you. That's how long I've got. That's my head, about the size of your head. If you've got a big head, you've got a big strand. All right, so we wanna do um, something that might make it go faster is if you measure this in and double it, if you double it, and then you cut it on one side, and then cut it on the other side. Okay, that didn't really make it go faster. I cut them individually last time, so I'm just going to cut them individually, you know, why not? And I have to do 20 of these. So, it's time for conversations with Ruby, when I talk about nothing. Not really. So, I've been reading Harry Potter. Spoilers, by the way. And I actually haven't read the books. I've only ever um, listened to them on tape, or maybe skipped book two, four, three, or four. But I'm on book five. And, um, it's so interesting to see what scenes are in the book and are not in the movie. And I get, I'm getting really nervous because there's this one scene right now. Dolores Umbridge is there, Ugh, that woman. And um, there's a scene where, where Dumbledore is like getting all defensive for Harry. And I don't remember in the movie and I'm getting really nervous because I don't know how it works out. Like, I, how am I supposed to know? I like to know what's gonna happen. I suppose if you're reading a book, that's kind of the point, or watching a movie. But it's very exciting to read the book and have this scene that I don't remember happening in the movie. It's crazy. I'm like two thirds the way through the book. It's my quarantine reading. Actually, I started reading them in August, the very beginning of our season, because I thought it was something that I should do, and it turned out to be a good thing, because now I've got a bunch to read over quarantine. Do you have any topics you want me to talk about so I don't talk about Harry Potter for the next, how long it takes to cut these? Just like, type away in the comments, or if you're cutting along with me, you know, don't, or do, it's fine. Okay, it's something else that I've been into. There's this Canadian TV show that's on Hulu, called Being Erica. It's so good. Drake is in it. I saw Drake in it and I was like, okay, I know he was like a TV actor, but I was not ready for that. I always laugh when he shows up on screen. It's not his fault. I mean, it's not his fault, his fault. That started his career. But yeah, Being Erica. Great TV show. It's on Hulu. Go watch it. Other things going on in my life. I got this new shirt recently. It's very exciting. I was online shopping. I don't online shop because I'm scared of things not fitting. Spoilers, this shirt didn't fit quite right. So I tacked it and I made it better. So that happened. How many am I on? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Three more. So great. But yes, I was online shopping because what else is there to do nowadays? I don't know. Arts and crafts, that's what. Reading Harry Potter. Hey yo, there's always something to do. Okay, one more. I promise I won't bore you. Maybe I already have, I don't know. I can't really make that promise anymore. Okay, 20 is done. 20 are done? We are done. Okay. Let's be real. We need more than this. We need 22 
make one more the same length as the others and put that off to the side. This will be your, let's make this one this top bit. Okay, so put that off to the side and then you're gonna take another one, it's a little bit longer. And, okay, hold on. The other ones were the size of my face. This one is longer than that. Put that one off to the side. That will be the wraparound. Okay, time to do the fun part. Now that everything's cut. Divide up your strands into groups of five. One, two, three, four, five. That's one group. Just keep them um, parallel to each other. One, two, three, four, five. They don't have to be perfectly lined up edge to edge. We're gonna fix that anyway later. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I've got my five groupings. We're going to take each one and fold it in half. And fold it in half. And in half. And in half. Now we're going to take one side and put it through the loop of the other so that we've got this kind of inside outside situation. So I'm going to put that inside and pull it so that we've got one that's kind of hanging on to the other. So we've got these two that are hanging on. Now we need to rotate so we're going to rotate, flip this around. So we've got, they're going to be facing, is this right? This is not right. That way. Yes, okay, this is how we want. We want two sides together, the loops together, and then the other bits going out. Now we're going to take the ends of one side, go through the loop of the other, and then take the other side and go through the loop. So if you imagine people's arms holding on, they're all kind of holding on like this where they've got the two sides holding on and it's just a brace of four. So it's a four sided brace. Now, we need to tighten this up and I'm going to tighten in a clockwise motion. I'm gonna start here and just kind of pull tight. I'm gonna pull tight and pull tight and pull tight. Okay, not, not super tight. And then just keep working your way around. Pull, so we're pulling that over, pulling, pulling, pulling. We're pulling the ends outward. And just keep doing that. You might need to pick it up, shimmy it around a little bit until it's nice and evenly topped. Okay. So we're just pulling it even, 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 and you should have something that looks like this. I'm gonna pull a little bit more. Super tight. All right, so we've got our little crisscross. So that's what I couldn't really show you because it's washed out, but that's our crisscross, just like that. Take your smaller strand of the two that we took extra, and we're going to tie this in a knot. All right, line them up edge to edge. And we're gonna tie a knot in the middle. So we're gonna do uh, a loop around and about halfway. It really depends on how much excess you want. So we're making this shape. Now this knot is going to slide through. So we have to do double, we have to double it up. So go around, it's a little challenging when it's so short. You can always make it longer and then cut off the bottom. All right, so I've got 
my double knot here. Find your paper clip or your needle or your hairpin and slide that on through. Now you're going to take your crisscross. It doesn't matter if it's top or bottom. They should look somewhat identical. And take the two ends of your hair clip and put them together, your paper clip. And we're just going to go right through the middle. Right through the middle to the other side and keep pulling and unloop. So now we've got this situation happening and that's underneath. Top, bottom. Now find your longer piece. And we're going to lay this down just like that. We're going to lay it down Place your tassel right over it. Actually, we're going to come, uh, let me pull on the side. And pull it so we've got a short side and a long side. Pulling your short side across, this is just going to be your starting point, and then you're going to go around. Okay, I lied. You need a little bit more. We're going to tie a knot off, so you need a little bit more. And we're going to go around around and around and around. It doesn't matter how many times you go around or how few times, but I'm going to say about that much. And then we're going to take these two, the two ends, and tie them off. Over and through. Uh-oh, something else got in there. Pull top. And then over under through. I instinctively just put the left side over now because that's what I do. And now we've got these two. If it's Halloween time and you like to keep the arms out, it looks kind of creepy. You can do that, but it's not Halloween, so we're not going to do that. We're going to take our paper clip, put our two excess in between the paper clip. So it looks like this. Just like that. And now we take the two ends and we have to weave it underneath the rib. So we're going to, this is really hard to show the camera, so I'm going to see if I can get started and then I'll show you. All right, so we've got that here. Tuck it under. All right, so I have tucked the paper clip under and then I've got the yarn coming out the other side and then I just pull and it pulls it through and then you just keep pulling and this one will be a little shorter so you can just make go in the, in the middle of your tassel kind of brush it out so now we've got hold on, even it out you might need to pull on some of the strings to do what you want Oh, there it is. I have one. All right, so we've got our tassel with our little hanger. And then to make it look less like a ghost, because right now it feels very ghost-like, find your scissors, find your yarn, cut off one more piece is the last one. Cut off one more piece. Lay down what looks like a ghost. And we're going to tie wherever you want the ends to be. If you want it to be a very short tassel, you can come all the way up, but I'm going to keep it longer. I'm going to say about here, you want to kind of line it up to your shortest piece so that they're even. You don't want it to um, be too uneven. And we're just going to bring it together. So we've got that tied together. Find your scissors. Pull back the two that we're not using. And then right at that point, start chopping away. It's like you're cutting off a ponytail. All the way, all the way. And then you just slide that off. Now you've got a perfectly even tassel. Look at that. And it's not perfectly even, just fringe out the bottom. 
and then you've got a tassel. So that's a macrame tassel. Oh, hi, Katie. So this is a macrame tassel. Um, different than a normal tassel, a normal tassel doesn't have the added uh, design on top. It doesn't look as much as, as a like knot. It looks more of a round, smooth um, fold as if you just took a bunch of yarn. Oops. It's as if you just took a bunch of yarn and folded it in half, a, but a lot more. And then gone around that's like a regular tassel but this is a macrame tassel so it's got this extra detail i really like this extra detail it makes it look more refined and more i don't know sophisticated i also feel that the more times you wrap around like this one the prettier it looks again that's my opinion but um i like the look of it more wrapped as opposed to fewer wraps and something that you could do with this, which I think would be really fun, is that if you have a sewing machine or if you like to use, you know, hand stitch and you want to make a pillow. So you want to make a pillow, so you want to make a blanket. You can always add these to the corners of your pillow, which I think would add a really nice detail to something homemade. You know, a pillow is relatively simple to make. It's just two pieces of fabric stitched together turned inside out. Why not add... A little fun detail especially if you have a pet they'll go crazy after these if you've got a cat make one of these stick it on one of those fishing poles and I'm sure they'd love it my cat loves to play with yarn and I okay she would tear this apart but I think it would be a fun thing to do yeah so you can have your tassel you can put it on your garland if you wish my my progression of a garland let's put Let's put it on the side. So when you put it on the, the uh, garland, you can thread it through just like that. And if you don't want it to move around, say you've got a bunch of these and you want it to kind of hang up without them sliding, a dab of glue works just fine. Um, you can always try to tie it onto your garland string, but um, this is significantly easier and it, I think it looks a lot simpler than trying to add another tie. So if you just add a dab of, of Gorilla Glue, I don't know, I use Gorilla Glue, if you have Elmer's Glue and you wanted to make it so that it didn't slide around, you can do that. I'll put on my other tassel to, to cap it off there. All right, so I know you guys can do as many pom-poms as me. Also, my pom-poms aren't all even. But if you do something along those lines, maybe more oops, on this side, then that could be a really pretty decoration for any homemade project or if you've got a mirror, say a bathroom mirror that you want to spruce up, you want to make yourself feel even more beautiful, you can put this up on your mirror. Or if you've got a window, you want to spark joy in people's lives, it's just a really easy way to add something special, add something homey. You know, that you can buy so many decorations, but why not make your own? My apartment has pretty much all the decorations I made by myself. I didn't really buy decorations because I knew I could make them. Um, so this is our pom-pom and tassel garland. Uh, you can keep going, you can go longer, you can go shorter. You can take your tassel if you want and just put it on your purse. That is a really trendy thing right now. Just stick it on your purse and it's super cute. Um, if you want a keychain, also I make those. Um, so hit me up if that's something you're interested in. But these little tassels would be great for a purse, uh, a gift, if you're giving a gift and you want something on the top, you could be like, hey, look at this, I made this for you. So yeah, something that you can do, something easy, um, just some yarn. There are really hardly any materials. Just scissors, yarn, and even a paper clip. Like, how easy is this? Didn't have to buy this. I didn't know if I even had a paper clip, but I did. So, that's fun. Um, and that's about it. You can do this with any color yarn you want. Uh, this one I colored actually with watercolor. Um, this is the one that I used for the uh, macrame class like two weeks ago. And so you can color it with watercolor if that's something that you're interested in. You add a little color 
if you don't have colored yarn. Um, yeah, and then all the other materials, you know, if you can get curbside pickup, I already did that. I got my watercolors from curbside pickup from Michaels. I feel like everyone should sponsor me right now. I have Harry Potter, Michaels. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be able to have access to these things. So, yeah, I hope you guys are excited that you can do this as well. Um, I know it's difficult to find things to do and entertain yourselves, but this is something that I do to enter entertain myself instead of watching TV for hours on end. Or you can do this while you watch TV on, for hours on end. You know, that's cool too. Anywho, I'm going to sign off now. I feel like I'm rambling and uh, you don't need to hear this. So I want to say good night. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we still got some more classes tomorrow and Friday. If you go check out our Facebook page or our Instagram, we've got all of our classes listed. So yeah, go check us out there um, and check out our YouTube channel where we've got all of our videos posted. If you want to see a previous um, project that we did, our paper flowers or our macrame or pop-up cards, you can go see uh, all that on the YouTube channel or if you just scroll down through the Facebook page. Yeah, so have a great night, everyone. Part of all.